It's Vanessa Paisley. How you doing? Oh, hi, Matthew. I'm well. How are you? I'm all right. Soldiering on. Soldiering on. Good exactly. to see you again. It's been a while. Yeah. So what are we going to talk about today? What's your subject of passion? OK, so I thought today we'd have a look at repatriation, which is one of my favourite topics, having been through it myself. <laughs> And also helping a lot of other people who've been going through it during the pandemic, right? Reverse culture shock plus COVID shock. It's not easy. And I know we've got some crazy stories to come. But of course, uh, what the viewers may not know, some of them will, you've got your five V's model, uh, Vanessa's five V's, which is a very powerful representation of the journey of repatriation, which is quite fun. Where does that begin with? Do you want to illustrate the first one? Yeah, so the first V is vacation. So um, many people talk about it as like the honeymoon phase. You know, you arrive home and it's wonderful. You're not foreign anymore. People speak your own language. You can see your family. You go shopping. You buy all those things that you've really missed when you were living abroad. And life seems great, you know, friends and family around. And it's easy. It's really easy. Exactly. And when you came back during your stay abroad, it was a vacation, although it was a fairly exhausting one. Do you remember everyone had to go and see every relative from A to Z? <sighs> and so it did, this trip is more relaxing. Or is it? Then we seem to plunge down into something. So you, do you want to illustrate what that is or maybe even with a story? Yeah, so then people kind of... Oh, it's not the same for everybody, by the way. I've had a lot of people saying, oh, my curve was like this. And others say, oh, mine was just like this. But no, you hit this victim stage. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, you, I was working with someone who actually like um, relocated or repatriated home. And then suddenly they were like stuck at home in February in their office. So they should have been like working and just settling back in. And then suddenly they were just stuck in their apartment and she, and she actually broke her toe. It was one of these working from home injuries and was then stuck in her apartment. And it was like, oh my goodness, what else can go wrong, you know? I mean, personally, when I came back to the UK, I'd been away for a long time. I'd been away for 20 odd years. But, you know, when I came back, I went to the bank, no credit card available for me. I was in my mid 40s. I thought I'm fairly professional. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, sorry, no credit rating, Miss Paisley, come back in six months. And I mean, I can laugh about it now, but it was just like a, a slap in the face. And I thought it's actually like being a foreigner all over again. So and and maybe I found things so like cafes I'd go out with friends and I'd be like doesn't anybody clean the tables in here it's so dirty <laughs> and obviously I'd lived in Austria and close to the Swiss border and I was used to a different kind of cleanliness but the thing is also these kind of things get very boring don't they if you keep going well in my past life I used to hike up a mountain to keep fit or you know some expats will go oh I, you know don't have a cleaner anymore and I used to have someone who used to cook and and this you know coming home is hard it, it's it's a hard reality and even as an interculturalist I expected it but I still had to go through some of the curve it, I couldn't avoid it and now I love it yeah you read the book but it doesn't matter no very good so that that credit card and bank thing I really get that that's a Kafkaesque nightmare of being a foreigner in your own country it's terrifying isn't it you know that idea of identity which is linked to geography and place we would all say I was born in this county or this town obviously this country and then when there's a there's a sense of you're not welcome back or you're semi-legal or you don't qualify terrifying when you when you look at all the refugees and migrants and yeah. so forth you become you you can you can empathize in a, in a tiny way for the just the the insecurity that they obviously feel yeah S scary. and I think I, I also had to retrain and re-educate myself certain pieces of paper that had been valid in Austria were not here not credible here right uh, this is kind of you don't really expect that so like 20 odd years into your career you, it, 
it's it was quite a shock to me actually but I did it and I made it and I'm still alive to tell the story yeah well, I, th- I think that also mm. gives you credibility as a supporter of people who are repatriating that you've <laughs> actually done the hard yards relatively recently and, and and gone through that we talked before about my boy going off to Berlin uh, requiring 18 different original documents, some of which just did not exist in the UK. Uh, but on the other way, I mean, if you look at how banking's changed, you're, you're suffering. I remember one guy came to the UK. He never did get a bank account. Think about that. He never got a bank account. They, they just mucked him about so much. And all those 45 minutes, I'm going to go through the following procedures and to be rejected after that, so close and yet not so far. 